Welcome to Mustard Seed Recording Studios. Today we're going to talk about Melodyne's new ARA interface in Studio One version 2. Now Melodyne's new ARA interface or Audio Random Access is an optimized uh, integration between Studio One and Melodyne's blobs that creates a seamless interaction or workflow between the two companies that's just a pleasure to work with. Now Celimony goes over their basic navigation commands on their website and I do recommend you watch their videos. However today I'm going to go over just some of the optimal workflow commands required to use Melodyne within Studio One. We're going to go over the advanced pitch correction techniques, uh, not your macro press a button to fix the problem approach, but actually going into fine tuning the individual drifts and modulations within a blob. We'll also go over a whole plethora of Melodyne tips and tricks. For example, we'll show you how to use Melodyne to create vocal guide tracks. This is when you record the vocal, then you correct it to perfect pitch and then you re-record the vocal listening while listening to the original track and each iteration you do of that cycle actually produces a better vocal track that's a great way to in essence use Melodyne as a comping tool we'll talk about understanding the relationship between Studio One events and Melodyne's working or transfer files and by default the Melodyne edits are linked to the event so if you copy the event the same edit still goes with the event If you change a note in one event and copy it 10 times you'll have that same change note each 10, 10 times so we'll talk about that in this default mode then we'll talk about how to break that link so that you can create for example multiple harmonies off of a single studio one event along with that we'll look at two, two approaches to using melodyne to create harmonizations We'll look at the separate track approach which allows you to do separate EQing and effects on each track and have more control over the each one of the harmonies or we'll also show you if you happen to be an owner of the Melodyne editor uh, which is polyphonic we will show you how to do that within one track and we'll also have some fun decomposing a pre-recorded songs harmonies and identifying the harmonies and then recording the harmonies ourselves We'll also look into Melodyne's metadata capabilities, such as tempo data and MIDI data. We'll use their tempo data to actually do some tempo mapping within Studio One. We'll use their MIDI data to augment it with synthesizers, or also export the MIDI out into a notation program. We'll also take a quick look at loops and using stock loops and changing their pitch, field, tempo, or even chord progression with Melodyne. We'll look at perfectly tuning your guitar so that it plays perfectly in tune in open chords as well as bar chords. And last but not least, we'll look at Melodyne's version 2 with Studio One, in particular the new capabilities to adjust variations within a blob. So that's a lot of ground to cover, so let's get busy. Okay, we're going to go over the basic commands and workflow of Melodyne the first uh, command to know is Control M, or right mouse click, edit with Melodyne. It will render. Usually it renders properly. It automatically figures out whether it's a melody or polyphonic or percussion. If it doesn't get it right, you can always run it again here. Notice when the thing came up, it pretty much zoomed into majority of the song that was there. I'm going to go over a couple of basic zoom commands. Holding the control and alt key down bring, gives you a zoom cursor and if you drag to the left you'll zoom in and out horizontally. If you drag up and down you'll zoom in and out vertically and holding the alt key allows you to drag and just reposition the thing freely. Probably the most useful way is to hold it control alt and then double click on a blob and it'll immediately center that blob and bring it right up to where you can see everything that's going on clicking here on the timeline will automatically change the timeline up there so they're always in sync with each other wherever the play cursor is clicking up here will not 
cause that timeline to change. So always drive from within the Melodyne editor. If you right mouse click, the cursor will show you a toolbar of uh, different tools you can use. The main tool, the pitch tool, format tool, the amplitude tool, timing tool, and split tool. First thing I want to talk to you about is the main tool. The main tool is kind of like a smart tool in that it behaves differently depending on where your cursor is at. If you're over, it will play the blob and allow you to drag the blob. Right into the blob, it allow you to stretch the blob or drag the blob in its duration. If you're at the left end, it'll allow you to stretch it that way. If you position your cursor just over it, you'll see it change to a split cursor where you can go in and my settings over here are on the pitch grid thing. If you click over here in this square right here, you'll see you get timing grid, pitch grid, and views. What do you want to view? I have all of you set up to, except for notation set up at this point. Show intentional notes is important. It shows this gray bar where it should, the note should be and allows you to drag the note into that space if you want to do it manually. All right, now I'm on a semi-tone snap. Uh, scale snaps are very useful for, especially when you're generating harmonies or building harmonies. But right now I'm going to leave it in semi-tone snap just to demonstrate a few things here. Still using the main tool. If I try to move this note right now, it will jump. It's You can see the note is slightly sharp, and I'm going to, it will actually jump a whole semitone, but it's still sharp, so it doesn't make good for us. So I'll hold down the alt key. It allows me to drag it into the ideal pitch. Now, notice up here on these two numbers when I drag that. I'm going to go ahead and undo that and bring it back to where it originally was. So it was, it's an E, but it's 35 cents sharp. So I'm going to Drag it around zero, but the best thing by far is to use your ear when you're tuning a note. It's also important to note that the pitch you actually hear when you're fine-tuning and dragging a note will be the pitch that your cursor is over. So if your cursor is over the beginning of the note in this example, you'll hear that um, overshoot of the pitch. So you actually hear the pitch that's equal to the pitch line that you see here. So if you were to grab the blob at the end of the blob with your cursor, you would hear a flat pitch. And this would be the kind of normalized pitch of the blob. So depending on what you're working on, whether you're trying to fine tune and overshoot, or if you're just trying to fine tune the average of the blob, pay attention to uh, where your, your cursor is within the blob. The next quick workflow option is if you drag across the notes and hi highlight all the notes and double click, in the pitch tool mode, they'll automatically snap into pitch. So that is convenient when you're working it with a large set of notes and you want to kind of line them all up in the beginning. You can also scrub the audio as you're working with it by dragging across the, the timeline. I see you in this place. You can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard to, to move from note to note. I see you when you see the next command I want to show you is uh, one that's used quite a bit, which is in the pitch tool space. We have pitch modulation tool and pitch drift tool. Pitch modulation controls the the amplitude of the modulation. So you see I can drag it all the way down to a flat modulation. Or you can uh, control the drift. And the drift is moving from one pitch to another from, from the beginning towards the end of the note. Or maybe the person comes in a little bit flat and then drifts sharp. This allows you to kind of set the medium of the pitch to the center of the pitch tone. So now let's just use some of the basic commands we've learned so far to work on this note here. The, the singer comes, overshoots the note sharply and comes back down and stays on the note 
at that point. So let's see if we can fix that. This sharpness is probably we could do one or two things. We can split this note and correct this, just that part, leave this part alone, or we can try to just bring the overall modulation down a little bit. Now his, uh, as he comes on to the note, it's still within the range of the note, plus or minus a few cents here. So let's go ahead and listen to that. And that's uh, more reasonable, more acceptable. You seek, you win. Now this note here, you see, we've got a drift problem where he comes in below the pitch and, and uh, drifts up to the pitch of the note. So I'm going to go ahead and use the drift tool there on that. And you'll see at the center of the blob, there's a kind of a line there. I'm just averaging out the uh, modulations from the beginning to the end so that they're level. So we get a little better win. Win. modulation as we go through there. I'm going to maybe just back off a little bit with the modulation. Win. You don't want to do it too much or it takes away the character of the singer. Win. This. I seek you in this place. Okay, let's work on this one here. Bring down the modulation. The drift is uh, going flat on this note. So we're gonna make that that note as level as possible. I seek you in this place. Here's an important tip about scrolling. Normally, if you're listening to the song and you're using the Melodyne editor, scrolling will work fine. Let me just demonstrate. First. And the page, it pages on to the next blob, and you see what follows along with the song. But a lot of times people get confused with this little feature, which is if you're working on this blob and you want to focus in on this blob, once that blob is highlighted, and scrolling, automatic scrolling will be deactivated. So watch what happens now. So this stays stationary and it doesn't scroll along with that. So your scrolling is not broken at this point. It's just keeping you focused in on that not that blob that you were working on. So if you click off the blob, deselect the blob, it will scroll along with the music. So just a quick review of what we learned. Starting off with the track that's already been melodyned. Here you'll see it has the notes in it. Shows that this one has been processed or, or does have a, a Melodyne file associated with it. Double clicking on it will bring up the Melodyne editor. Double clicking on the zoom bar at the bottom here will actually zoom the thing all the way out. So if you double click on the horizontal and vertical, you'll get the entire song. If I go into a particular note and alt click on it, it will zoom into that note and bring it into focus. Scrubbing. Uh, works as such. You can also use zero keys. Editing commands. Right mouse click to see all your tools. Primary one is your main tool, which allows you to do five or six different things, including zooming, stretching both ends, as well as splitting a note. To really finesse uh, the uh, variation in pitch within inside a note, you'll use the pitch modulation and pitch drift tools. And uh, note separation can be done separately here, as you see we did in the, uh, if I want to continue to split these. Also, uh, if you double click it again, it will unsplit it. So this is kind of helpful when you want to combine two notes. So that covers the basic commands. So let's go ahead and start building some harmonies.